Hello health professionals, uh, welcome to this week's webinar. We're very excited to talk to you and have you take time from your busy schedule to be here, but uh, I think that uh, as you'll see, it'll be well worth your time tonight. This is an exciting topic that in fact, uh, me and Dr. Brimhall have spent some time on. We actually made a few changes just because we have so much phenomenal information to share with you. Uh, Optimal Health Systems is a company bringing this webinar to you this evening. Uh, my name is Doug Grant. Uh, I'm a nutritionist by degree with uh, postgraduate work in sports medicine. And I uh, just uh, have this picture here because of the playoffs going on right now. Uh, checking the body fat of a friend, Charles Barkley, some of you might recognize. And uh, just wanted to, to let you know that no matter whether patients or professional athletes or just those of us trying to stay healthy, the information we have tonight uh, on autoimmune disease is really important and can affect uh, all of us and help each of us no matter where we come from. The company Optimal Health Systems is over 20 years old and uh, we've had many research proven formulas, patents. We're in thousands of clinics around the world, uh, many professional athletes and teams. Uh, that use us uh, going into the world finals next week. Uh, one of our clients, Kyrie Irving, will be playing that we're excited about. And many consumers of the formulas, just people trying to reach optimal health. And we're very excited about the work over the years and focusing in on whole foods and pre-digesting nutrients so they can be absorbed at the cell level. And as many of you know, over the last couple of years, my relationship uh, with a good friend, Dr. John Brimhall, that started uh, well over <clears throat> 20 years ago uh, that we've reignited that friendship to a point where he's actually bought into uh, the formulations in the company and uh, we have looked at the formulations and saw that there were some specific ones that uh, through his expertise and years of work with health professionals and patients uh, that we were in need of uh, that uh, he had worked with specifically. So a lot of the formulas that are still some of the best sellers out there in other companies, uh, Dr. Brimhall has brought over and we've, we've formulated with the pre-digested nutrients to make him um, so much better and higher absorbed with his great recipes that he already had. And uh, real excited to have him on board. And Dr. John, do you want to talk for a minute before we get going? You bet. It's kind of interesting. Doug and I both put this presentation together separately. Then we merged our slides and we thought, oh my goodness, we better do this in two stages. So Doug's going to run with the ball tonight and go through his perspective, and then we're going to double right back next Tuesday night, same time, same station, uh, 7 o'clock Mountain Time, 6 o'clock Pacific Time, and I'll run with the ball again next week and give you a little different perspective, more on the halogen toxicity and heavy metal toxicity, environmental toxicities that's triggering the autoimmune conditions. Now, I really have a pretty good memory back when I went to school. This is my 45th year of practice. And when each of my sons, that are all physicians now, would go in their pre-medical work and medical degrees working on them, they'd come home and, and uh, wherever they were at and, and bug dad, do you remember this, do you remember that, what do you remember about osteology, neurology, and they were, were amazed that I had such a good memory going back to the basic courses. And is in going back to the 60s when I was actually in college, I do not remember the word Hashimoto's. And I, Maybe if we covered it, it was like in five minutes. And now, if they're not spending five months covering it, you're missing the boat. Well, the earliest patient that Dr. Brett treated, and we keep in constant contact, is he took over my practice in Arizona and is now in Gilbert area. He had a 13-year-old patient. I referred to him with Hashimoto's. And now, since then, he's had a three-month-old sent to him who was diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease. And Doug's going to go over the different things that they, they talk are autoimmune, but I'll tell you what, it almost can go anywhere and everywhere of autoimmunity. I mean, even ADD, ADHD, weight problems, um, especially Hashimoto's. There's so many areas that the autoimmunity, where the body's attacking itself. Doug, go ahead and hit that one more time there. We go. Royal Lee was a hero of mine, and when I went to school, uh, started in 1968. I believe he was just alive or just passed away. Uh, he, he passed away about that time. And so when I got out of chiropractic school, all I knew about was adjusting patients, but very soon got into the 
vitamin lymphatic manual and started learning about nutrition to go along with my chiropractic adjustments and later went on to be all six steps, nutritional, structural, chemical, allergies, etc. And, and what I learned from Royal Lee was the very most important thing we can do is eat right. And when we supplement, they should be whole foods uh, and so the body could use them. And if you're not aware of this study, they talk about how with all the research that was available back a few years ago, they evaluated seawater. And they took everything that they found that was in the seawater from spectrophotometry and all kinds of testing, and they built artificial seawater. And they put sea going fish in the water, and they, everyone died. They then took one drop of seawater and dropped it in the water that they had made in this tank, and all the fish they put in there stayed alive. So there's things that Royal Lee pointed out to us. And unless you are using whole foods, you're missing. The thing that they didn't have in the technology in that day is all they could do was take like vegetables and fruits and, and convert them right into pill format. Now with your organically fermented high potency whole food vitamins that we use, and as long with the pre-digestion nutrient delivery system, we've changed the world. I think Royal Lee would promote the products that we have developed here through Doug's patents and his innovation from here. Because now instead of having one milligram of vitamin C or one unit of vitamin E in a product and have it all natural, we can have 25 or 50 or 100 and have it pre-digested and organically fermented in high potency whole vitamin nutrients. So it's a whole different world. I think Royal Lee is, is jumping for joy of all the things that we can do now. And when we get into this autoimmune disorders, lupus, Crohn's, Hashimoto's, chronic fatigue, scleroderma, celiac disease, fibromyalgia, and the list goes on and on. We have such an environmental pollutant situation. Our air, our water, our food is polluted. We are compromising our bowel, we're compromising our brain, our digestion. And so Doug has put together an amazing presentation of how important our digestion is. Since 80 to 90 percent of the immune system is in the gut, and a lot of autoimmune disorders is not a low-functioning gut, it's low function in some areas, but becomes hyper facilitated in others where we begin to attack ourselves. Doug, with that introduction, let's let you flow. I appreciate it, Dr. John. And you know, as he was, Dr. John is mentioning that when we are looking at the research and putting slides together, the two main things that we really saw with this was that we were able to see that the digestion and also the effect of metals in the body were two huge factors and so that's why we're kind of breaking things up this evening and being able to bring that to you. So let's go ahead and have some uh, understanding a little bit of, of where we've been and where we're at now on autoimmune disease, lay out some of the foundation and then get into the answers. Up until about 10 years ago we really didn't have any detailed statistics of how bad this epidemic of autoimmune disease was unless you know someone that had it, one of the 23 and a half million Americans who actually suffered from one of these diseases. Well, the, the National Institute of Health uh, gave a report, a phenomenal report that they released. It was called Progress in Autoimmune Disease. And the research listed over 100 autoimmune diseases. And we never even realized there was that many. And that they stated that the quick rise is startling on autoimmune disease and no one's going after the cause. And I thought that was interesting that the National Institute of Health would even admit that, hey, people are treating these symptoms. They're not going after the cause of the problem. And so what is autoimmune disease? Well, autoimmune disease, it's an illness that occurs when the body tissues are attacked by its own immune system. The body's basically attacking itself. And since the immune system is so complex within the body, it's normally designed to go after invaders, like infectious agents or antigens and things like that. Well, the problem is that it starts turning on itself, and that causes a lot of issues. Now, autoimmune disease patients, this is a huge problem, and I hope that as health professionals we can understand this and really show the sympathy and many times empathy needed with the patients the patients on average see six different doctors before being diagnosed properly with any autoimmune disease. 45% of the patients with AI 
have been labeled hypochondriacs in early stages of diagnosis. In other words, doctors tell them, look, it's just in your head. You're not really sick. There's nothing wrong with you. I mean, can you imagine that? Almost half of all the patients that have autoimmune disease have been told they're hypochondriacs and they're just making it up. It's, it's amazing what people with autoimmune disease have gone through and are going through. And 50% of all cases involving women, they're told there's nothing wrong on an average for five years. So whether it's the Epstein-Barr, the fibromyalgia, the lupus, and so on, they go on an average, okay, not, not the long end of it, but an average of five years before they're told, oh, you might actually have something. What a terrible way to live and depressing, knowing something's wrong and wondering if you're making stuff up and in your own head. It's absolutely... I can't think of any other disease in the world that, that where patients have this problem. And that comes from the American Autoimmune Related Disease Association. It's absolutely terrible what's happened and we're something you'll find out tonight we can do about it. Well, autoimmune diseases have increased so rapidly that the research and statistics show that Americans are now more likely to suffer from an autoimmune disease than heart disease or cancer. I mean, isn't that amazing? Yeah, it blows me away. We now, each one of us, are more likely to suffer from something where a body starts attacking itself than heart disease or cancer. But yet that's not the focus or was talked about out there today. Disease cuts an average, an autoimmune disease cuts an average of 15 years off of your life and dramatically lowers your quality of life. So we can see that this isn't just another topic that, uh, that me and Dr. John decide to talk about tonight, we're talking about a topic that is extremely important to get the information out, to be able to help these patients that go years and years without being diagnosed properly and being told nothing's wrong with them, and actually show some of the root causes and things that we can do to actually help fix this. And so I wouldn't blame people like Lucy, you know, autoimmune disease, I hate you, that, that people just, just have got to be screaming from their inner core of how bad this is and how much they don't like it. As Dr. John mentioned, Graves disease, Hashimoto's, lupus, type 1 diabetes many times isn't understood and we're going to get into that in more detail as a autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, one of the most debilitating diseases, celiac disease. And we think of these, okay, yeah, I got it, but do we realize that truly there's over a hundred diseases that are autoimmune Look at this list here. Um, you can scan around. Chronic fatigue syndrome. A lot of people don't realize that one is it. Uh, congenital heart block. Uh, we've got everything on here. Um, even from the herpes situation, endometriosis, um, a fibrosis, fibromyalgia. We've got juvenile arthritis, myositis, lupus, Lyme disease, myositis, and narcolepsy. Uh, neutropenia, optic neuritis, uh, all of these, and the list goes on and on and on. Myasthenia gravis, um, it, it, it polymyositis. I, if you just look at this, it's amazing how many of these conditions now uh, we can trace back to the body attacking itself. Psoriasis, neuritis, scleroderma. Uh, it, it's absolutely amazing uh, what's going on. So autoimmune diseases are the fastest rising pathologies in the world, fastest rising. And as health professionals, we truly do need to take notice and treat the cause. Now it's reported there can be multiple causes of autoimmune disease, of course, but research shows two main culprits. As Dr. John mentioned, he's going to focus in on the heavy metal toxicity next week. I'm going to touch on it just as a, a little teaser this evening with some of the research. But my focus tonight is going to be on number one, which is the non-digestion of proteins by the body, either the foods we take in or the viruses that come in the body, and how the non-digestion of protein can be one of the major culprits to autoimmune disease and what we can do to fix it. So we need to understand and get back a little bit one-on-one to digestion and the role enzymes play in the digestion process, and that will help us understand this situation. We all know that raw foods contain digestive enzymes that are destroyed when cooked or processed. You set an apple out, it starts to rot. Uh, if you cook one, it'll just sit there. I still have in the office a, a Big Mac that's three years old because it's cooked and processed. So how enzyme depletion causes disease? Well, 
if we take enzyme deficient pasteurized dairy and a deficiency internally creates because it's it's using up all of the lactose we become lactose intolerant because the dairy doesn't have lactase in it and if we have eat enzyme deficient uh, processed proteins it causes things like autoimmune disorders arthritis and gout we enzyme deficient cooked fats and, and depletion of the body's lipase enzymes happen we get heart disease so we know that enzymes are critical to digest the food and if the enzymes do not digest the food we do not consume raw raw foods if we've had processed and cooked foods those foods don't digest they cause disease well digestion takes priority over other processes in the body if digestion doesn't happen you die right if, if if you ate food and it didn't digest it all, we'd die. But if we digest it partially, we can get autoimmune disease. And that's what we're talking about tonight, is digesting the food enough to keep us alive, but actually making so the body starts attacking itself. Here's how it works in a little bit more detail. We have a carbohydrate. We eat the carbohydrate. And then the body uses amylase, which is a main enzyme to digest carbohydrates, and it breaks it down into... Um, the, the breakdown of two sugars in the body and then we take the, the maltose and the lactose and the sucrose and the body then will take enzymes maltase, lactase and invertase and it will take these disaccharides and break them down to usable sugar. So it takes all of the enzymes to break down the carbohydrate. If one of them isn't present in the food or we didn't bring it back in through supplementation then all of a sudden we have a foreign particle in the body. So we know that the big culprit that creates autoimmune disease is protein or the lack of a digestion of protein. When we consume protein, the body uses protease to start with to break the proteins down to peptides. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. Then the body uses another enzyme called peptidase to break them down into single amino acids. If your proteins broke down to single amino acids, any protein we consume, we're good to go. I don't care if that protein's gluten, casein, whey, red meat, whatever it is. If it's broken down to amino acids, we're good to go. But the problem is, very seldom are they broken all the way down to amino acids. And there are foods like red meats and gluten and those things that are harder to break down. And that's why they are the culprit to a lot of problems today. And as we age, we have a problem. We make deposits into our enzyme bank account, as Dr. Edward Howe uh, mentioned way back in Enzyme Nutrition, one of the original books on this in the 50s. He says, we, we add to our bank account of enzymes, the, the body's ability to digest food through eating raw foods. But when we eat cooked and processed foods, it takes away from that bank account. And if we take away the enzymes that digest protein out of the bank account, so eventually we can't break that protein down all the way, that's when we have problems. So let's focus in on that to really understand it because if once you get this, it's all over with. You just, if it, it's a big light bulb that comes on. Most proteins are completely digested down to free or single amino acids. And amino acids and sometimes are short illegal peptides, are, they're absorbed by the secondary transport. In other words, an amino acid can be bound to a couple other amino acids, but that's it. If the amino acids are not broken down to either single or di or tripeptides, then we have issues. And I'll explain it a little bit further. The human body was not meant to absorb more than three amino acids bound together. So we have a whole protein here on the left, broken down to peptides by protease. Then, then peptidase breaks it down to the amino acids. And you can see how it's absorbed into the bloodstream. And even the peptides, if it's two or three amino acids, You'll see the dots, the circles down there at the bottom. If it's one, two, or three, they're absorbed into the bloodstream and everything's great. But if somehow the body absorbs a peptide with more than three amino acids, we're in trouble. Remember, the body, white blood cells normally protect the body from antigens. An example of antigens include bacteria, viruses, and toxins, including undigested foods. Now, autoimmune disorders occur when the body mistakes its own tissues for one of these antigens, okay? Whether, again, it's a bacteria, virus, or an undigested food, the body mistakes its own tissues for one of them. That's really important to understand. When the body absorbs more than three amino acids bound together, that's the problem. And I'm going to give you one example 
that help you understand how you can apply this to every type of protein out there, whether it's a virus, whether it's an immunization, whatever it might be, um, a different food. Let's use casein as the example. Now, casein is a, one of the proteins found in milk or in dairy products. And uh, I just want to use this as an example because there's some phenomenal research both ways, even in the sports world and in just straight with patients. And I think once we see this, you'll understand. There is a couple studies showing the correlation between casein consumption or dairy consumption from processed milk and the incidence of insulin-dependent diabetes. So in other words, we know that when more processed milk is consumed, there's a higher level of diabetes. But what's interesting with the Price Pottinger Foundation, they found that when people actually consumed raw milk, there wasn't an increase. Why? Because the raw milk contained the enzymes to break the casein down all the way to single amino acids. But with processed milk, there is no ability to break that casein down to single amino acids, thus this dramatic increase in diabetes one of the major autoimmune disease. To understand this, we must understand protein structure. Protein structure is actually pretty simple to explain, but complex within the body. We know that, for example, let's say that there's 23 amino acids. And those 23 amino acids, when they're bound together, depending on how they're bound together, will determine what type of protein it is. In one specific order, that protein is muscle tissue. In another order, it's hormones. In another order, it's a coating on the bones. In another order, it's a transport protein for cholesterols, so on and so forth. So every protein has a different structure or combination of those amino acids. It's actually a, a simple linear, like beads on a string form, just stranded together over and over again, depending on which protein it is. And again, the amino acid structure is key. And I want us to understand that, is every single protein that we consume, every single protein within the body in different forms of tissue have a different amino acid structure, okay? The polypeptide chain structure, different amino acids connected to different ones. And that's very important to understand. So proteins, are made up of 100 plus amino acids strung together. So picture a string of at least 100 amino acids. That's a protein. It can go up to tens of thousands. But then if it's broken down into polypeptides, remember poly means more, okay? So many, I guess you'd say. And if there's, there's four amino acids bound together to 99, it's called a polypeptide. Well, then if it's a three of them, it's a tripeptide, would make sense. Two amino acids bound together is a dipeptide, and then single amino acid, we just call it single amino acid, like glutamine, arginine, um, lysine, leucine, those types of things. Those are individual single amino acids. When you bind two of them together, like an arginine and glutamine, it's a dipeptide. If three of them are bound together, it's a tripeptide, and so on and so forth. The body was meant, the reason I have those in yellow, the tri, di, and single, the body is meant to absorb single, di, and tripeptides, no problem. The body takes them in, will we'll dismantle the di and tri a little bit more, and then the body will reassemble them on whatever protein the body needs at the time. If it's muscle, whether it's bone, whether it's hormones, whatever it might be, the body reassembles them. That's how the system works with protein. And we have the amino acids floating around in the bloodstream. Well. Casein, back to our example here from dairy, uh, when it's digested down to seven amino acids, this is what it looks like. So in other words, it's broken down from the heavy protein down to a polypeptide. And this, I really hope that everyone can understand and follow me with this. So if we have the caseinate protein, 100 amino acids or more, then it's broken down, so it's partially digested. All down to seven amino acids. And this structure shows those amino acids. You'll see there, tyrosine, proline, phenylalanine, proline, glycine, proline, and then isoleucine on the top right. That's the seven amino acid chain in that order. Well, this is what's important. In the body, in the pancreas, in the islet, they have an amino acid profile right on the end of their structure. That protein tissue on the islets in the pancreas has an amino acid profile. Guess what it is? It's identical to casein. So if we take a look at caseinate or casein proteins from dairy, and if they're not digested down to single di or tripeptides, 
they get in the body, then all of a sudden the body says, hey, this, there's this foreign invader in here. We better get rid of it. So the body sends away blood cells and starts digesting them down, and they're doing their work, and you keep drinking more and more of that caseinate that's not being broken down, and more and more, and the body keeps making more and more white blood cells, and eventually those white blood cells are going around. They're like, hey, here's some more of that, but it actually isn't that caseinate that you ate, that dairy. It actually is the protein tissue in the pancreas, and so now the body attacks it. Boom. Now what happens? We have diabetes. So can you see the problem here? Depending on the protein you eat, if it's not broken down, that protein structure will resemble a tissue in the body. And so we've got to do two things. One, keep multiple amino acid structures or polypeptides out of the body and ensure that the body doesn't allow more than one, two, or three amino acids to be absorbed. So if this seven amino acid structure, some of you might know it as BCM7, doesn't get absorbed in the blood, that's great. That's what we're wanting. So let's say the body only partially breaks it down and we have these seven amino acids, but it can't get past the intestine line. It can't get past the villi. Body does its job, kicks it out. We're good to go. But if it does get in, as I mentioned, we get diabetes. And I gave some references here to studies showing how bovine casein creates diabetes. And it's interesting because a lot of the studies were with youth. Well, it's because their enzyme system wasn't fully developed yet. So whether it's in our youth or as we get older and we've abused the enzyme system, either one is a problem. So how do more than three amino acids get into the bloodstream, like this seven amino acid structure with casein, BCM7, so that, that we can cause these problems in autoimmune diseases? You know, the body's not supposed to let more than three amino acids in bounded at one time. Well, it's through what's called leaky gut syndrome. And uh, as Dr. John could talk about, when we all got started, medical community said, there's no such thing as leaky gut syndrome. And they're, oh, that's not impossible, blah, blah, blah. We knew it was, research showed it, and now they actually finally accepted that it's not only possible, but it's a leading cause of autoimmune disease today. And very simply, what happens is through stress and different toxins in the body, um, the gut wall causes an overproduction of something called zonulin. And zonulin actually will spread apart the junctions and that are supposed to only allow single, double, or triple, single di or tri peptide amino acids in, and it spreads them out. So instead of having a tight junction on the left of that, that display there on, on the picture, it spreads it out. So on the right, that now larger protein molecules, four, five, six, seven, amino acids bound together is getting through. Therein allowing things like BCM7 that causes diabetes or other amino acid structures that cause a rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis or myasthenia gravis or different things. Now all of a sudden the body has those getting in because of zonulin production and the intestines are allowing these large uh, amino acid polypeptide structures to get in. And so I really hope that right now a big light bulb's going off with a lot of you saying, I get it, that what's happening is, is that these different amino acid structures that are getting in due to leaky gut syndrome are causing the body to go after different tissues because the amino acid structure is different with each protein. And whatever tissue in the body matches that structure, that's what it's going to attack. That's why there's over 100 different diseases. So Undigested acidic meat causes rheumatoid arthritis, goes after the joint. Undigested wheat, celiac disease, most of us know that. Viruses or binders from immunizations, Down syndrome, proteins bound to metal, metals, dementia, Alzheimer's, the list goes on and on and on. Um, you can see the problem and what we really need to do to fix this is to digest our foods and be able to help with reduction of zonulin production to keep those junctures tightened in the intestines. So what do we do about it? Well, number one, we quit eating us processed crap protein. We need to eat healthier proteins and be able to get people off, of, especially anytime you fry a protein or anything like that, we're really causing the structure to be almost undigestible. But with nutrients, what can we do? The number one nutrient by far by far in this section of this talk this week is digestion because we 
have the ability to add back the enzymes and the probiotics and minerals to guarantee the complete breakdown of that casein, of that whey, of that red meat protein, of that white meat protein, of that vegetable protein. And to be able to break those proteins down like they should into tri diet and single amino acids. That is the key. So eat healthier proteins. Then when you do eat protein at all, take a digestion formula capsule to ensure that the protease and peptidase enzymes are there to break the protein all the way down so that the body doesn't have to fight not accepting those additional amino acid structured proteins into the body. That They're not even there. They're already broken all the way down. And then we add the Flora Plus to do a blitz once in a while. We always recommend is do a blitz every three or four months. What, what is a blitz? It means go through a bottle four or three times a day just for a bottle till it's gone. Really ensure that you inoculate the bowels constantly. Have a good consistent supply of, uh, supply of flora because it's proven that if you have good balance of flora in the system, Dr. Shahani found this back at the University of Nebraska, uh, that the zonulin production reduces that the flora is there and it keeps a good balance uh, of, of pH and allows for proper zonulin production and not overproduction. The other factor is the oxidation of the villi in the intestines and that's where the fruit and veggie comes in. It has the highest ORAC rating of any formula on the market today with all five free radicals being neutralized. So the combination of number one, if you can only do one thing, digestion with your food to guarantee that we don't have those multiple amino acid chains, okay, the polypeptides is the key, but then the flora plus and the fruit and veggie to keep the junction, the junctures tight so that we don't have the ability for a leaky gut syndrome. And in many cases, many of you know that you probably need to do a cleanse to begin with to get things cleaned out. What's a half day cleanse or some of the cleanses that Dr. Grimhall We'll talk about next week and we'll go over a little bit more. So I'm going to give a little tease into next week and, and finish up with a few things. But the other factor of creating these autoimmune diseases that are so devastating out there is heavy metals. But I, I'm just going to mention it from the standpoint of digestion. Even though heavy metals like mercuries and cadmiums and arsenics are not proteins, what happens is when they get into the blood, then they start attaching to protein tissues. And these are called in, in the research metalloproteins. And uh, it's not a very fun read, but there's a, a book called the Encyclopedia of Metalloproteins. It goes into to, to ridiculous detail of this, but it really is enlightening. And the immune system's white blood cells attack the heavy metals that are now surrounded by muscle or joint tissue. So the body says, hey, we don't want this excess heavy metal, mercuries and arsenic and other metals that are in the system in the body. And so we are going to go attack them, but they have flocculated into the tissues. And if it's muscle tissue, fibromyalgia. If it's joint tissue, arthritis, and so on. And the autoimmune disease starts, and it starts attacking those tissues because it gets used to going after the metals through the tissues. And then, boom, all of a sudden the body just starts breaking down its own tissue because of the heavy metals. And these are called metalloproteins. Heavily, heavily researched. We know this to be completely a fact. Um, this is some diagram of how it happens, that the, the heavy metal attaches to the tissue and then the body will come in and start attacking, going after that metal and gets used to attacking the tissue and then keeps attacking the tissues. And that's how we get major problems. I personally know about this one, um, consumed uh, tuna too often and all of a sudden was getting extreme pains and went and did my blood work and it looked like I had a rheumatoid arthritis from my blood work. In fact, that's what they diagnosed. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not the case. Took a look at what's going on, going, oh my heavens, uh, I know better than this. Went back, took that out of the diet, actually went, uh, you know, uh, plant-based for the most part uh, with just a meat once in a while, very careful. And all of a sudden, all the symptoms went away, blood work cleared up, and they're like, how in the world did you get rid of rheumatoid arthritis? And I said, well, I never had it. That was just the body's reaction, inflammatory reaction uh, to those metals. And once we stopped putting them in the body and we cleansed them out, the body takes care of itself. And so uh, that's the way we want to look at it and understand how heavy metals, they do correlate with our discussion tonight on digestion from the protein standpoint. And what Dr. John will do next week 
is really go into the other factor of heavy metals with halogens and, and their effect on the body and just really go into some great, great research on that to the point where I was looking at slideshow and I, I'm like, we can't touch this. This is too great of information. And so I highly recommend that uh, those of you that are on this week, make sure you dial in next week and then make sure you invite colleagues to, and friends to, to be a part of it also to be able to get part two. And we'll make part one available for those that want to listen to it before then and be able to build up the, the audience to understand this grave disease that we really need to fix. So there's a lot of tools to help with your clinics, as you know, with the functional test kits and the different tests that are going on and the information and these webinars. Uh, we have the system to, to get this information to your patients through the Thrive system and to stay connected with you for you know the, the 21st century. I also want to uh, do a shout out and ask all of you uh, to help with this personal uh, movement I'm, I've started <laughs> just recently. I have a passion about it because of all the children and uh, my kids and people I see in social media that get bombarded with junk every day. We have a failure to communicate and it's mainly due to excess communication of junk and misinformation. And if we don't create something to provide good information, healthy information about proper eating habits, good wholesome foods, digestion, healthy lifestyle, a healthy mindset, a focused intense thought, then all of a sudden all we get and all our children get is junk and they get bombarded with this. Whether we like it or not, they get bombarded and we need to make sure they get bombarded with some of the good stuff. So go on Instagram, follow us, ohs for life on Instagram. If you don't have Instagram, do it because your kids have it, I guarantee it. And all you do is you set up the account and uh, you just go on your phone and, and uh, type in Instagram and it'll come up. It's an app and then you follow OHS for Life and then follow your kids and their friends too. You'll be, see what everyone's posting. Uh, and it's like 15 seconds a day of looking at, you know, if we post something from OHS, it's just a picture or a little 10 second video, 15 second video. So it's real quick little motivational tips to be able to keep us focused on optimal health and not the junk that's out there today. So I just wanted to really do a shout out and ask you to do that. Um, in finishing, digest your food to greatly lower autoimmune disease risk. The way to do it is the digestion formula and eat more raw food. Number one, eat more raw food. Number two, when you eat processed or cooked food, take digestion with it. It's the only formula with every known enzyme needed to digest all foods, all carbohydrates, all proteins, and all fats and the nutrients to ensure they're completely broken down. It's not just enzymes, it's also probiotics and organic minerals. And that's Optimal Health Systems. We're, we're truly committed to you. We're committed to this mission of, of educating people about these diseases today. And autoimmune disease is real. It's a real disease uh, encompassing over 100 different uh, forms of it. And it, a lot of it comes down to breaking foods down properly so the body won't see these antigens that come in, these proteins, and start attacking them and then attacking itself. It's something that we can prevent. It's something that if it's there, we can help eliminate. And we just need to educate and make sure we understand this insidious uh, disease onslaught. We appreciate your time tonight and uh, ask you to join with us in everything we have to help market this out there today with Thrive and with our emails and with the the Instagrams and with these webinars and everything we're trying to do to get the information out to help people reach optimal health. Thanks so much for your time and we'll talk to you. We'll be here next week, same time, same place to hear Dr. John. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.